Yeah. Now let's stop talking about Geno Smith and turn this back into the Miami Hurricanes. What I think can benefit is Tyler Van Dyke having an offense that like does anything that he does well, like just anything. You know, which clearly uh, did not happen under Josh Gaddis to the point where even Josh Gaddis himself famously said, yeah, I didn't really even talk to him or have a meeting about scheme and what he wanted to do until uh, until the bye week there or whatever. But your star quarterback potentially projected as a first round draft pick coming in, like ostensibly like a guy, if not the guy that you evaluated when you took this job, you didn't at all consider anything and again go back and look it up it was in a monday presser he said it live and in person like with his chest in front of people right shannon dawson i mean i think he says okay i'm not saying it's the same as geno smith but i know the big number nine from the miami hurricanes he can chuck that ball right he has a strong arm he does well throwing you know throwing the ball vertically I already talk about smash high low read that has a flag behind a curl and he's surgical on that even if the defender sinks to the flag and it's like cool i'm gonna dump it to the curl you know the short uh the, the low uh, uh receiver and let him work still and then look at all those flea flickers remember that game against pittsburgh in 21 when they just kept it look we're running all the flea flickers all the double moves all the verticals all Y'all can't check us. Y'all can't run with us. And we're going to do crazy stuff on top of just whatever regular scheming we're going to do. And just at the end of the day, at the end of all of those things, Tyler, throw that bitch. Don't, don't dink and dunk. Throw that bitch. And he did. And it was great. So now Shannon Dawson, having done this for a long time, being an air raid guy, and then, you know, to the heart of the question, looking back at what was done, you can look at last year. Uh, when he had uh, explosive offense, when you look at all the way through his uh, career uh, trajectory, being an air raid guy, having coached Geno Smith, which is why, by the way, if you didn't know, Geno Smith had been having workouts, plural, at the U. Also because destination location, guys live in Miami, guys want to uh, vacation in Miami, and obviously Geno is from South Florida. So yeah, when he wants to come work out, they're in the Carol Sulphur Indoor Practice Facility because it's like, hey, I'm going to call my old offensive coordinator. I'm going to go down to the U. We're going to use that facility. We're going to go do that. And then you see, okay, cool. All those things line up and say, cool, what can I do schematically on offense that plugs into what Tyler Van Dyke does well? Throw the ball vertical. Great. And I think that he has a lot of ways to do that. And when you infuse some of those um, schemes into the offense, which was clearly just a moribund mess last year, then you can unlock some of what, made us excited about Tyler from a performance standpoint because it wasn't even just potential like, okay, Jay Garcia, you know, he has a strong arm and he this high-rated recruit and we'll see and we'll see and we'll see. Again, record-setting performance as a redshirt freshman coming off the bench third, third in 21 because, and I know everybody wants to say, that go back and watch the film, go back and look at the plays, right, or the play chart. Derek King started, he got injured. Jay Garcia came in, broke his ankle, and then Tyler Van Dyke came in and then went on that insane run. But we've seen him do these things. So unlike Josh Gaddis, who apparently didn't give a damn and just didn't even check, you know, hopefully Shannon Dawson is somebody who says, cool, I have a history of vertical passing games, of explosive passing games, and I have somebody whose strength is pushing the ball vertically down the field, obviously when he doesn't have an AC shoulder joint injury like he did last year, which, you know, I give him credit for wanting to play through, but like he, I don't he shouldn't. That, that season was so lost. It was, yeah, anyways. But if he doesn't have a shoulder injury, you throw the ball. So, yeah, let's lean into those things. And I think that what – even if it doesn't look exactly like Geno Smith did in 2011, 12, whatever, if you infuse some of those things to plug into what Tyler Van Dyke does well, that could be advantageous for the Miami Hurricanes. And that is what I'm looking for. In addition to an improved running game, that's going to be a foundation of a Mario Cristobal offense. Like it, love it, hate it, whatever. A former offensive lineman wanting to have a good offensive line and a strong power run game to be able to control, you know, just – the overall operations that's going to be there, but hopefully we he's 
opening up things a little bit. And I think that by hiring Shannon Dawson, you're talking to, especially on the passing schemes, that things are going to open up and hopefully we're able to find some receivers uh, to be able to do some stuff. Sometimes various coaches, both assistant and head coaches are considered to be not really good at what they do, but that's in context. That's not that they don't know football, don't know what they're doing. It's right. versus the competition. There has to be a, a, a tier system. There has to be a ranking or a rating. There has to be a worst coach in America, whoever that is. That doesn't mean they don't know what they're doing or they don't know football. But in the case of this Josh Gaddis thing, uh, my goodness, regardless of your industry, regardless of your craft or what you are asking your staff, your team, your unit, whatever the case might be to do, you walk into a situation like that and to not go right to the heart of what the success was last year and try to duplicate the success, then go to the weaknesses, try to shore those up, but start with the successes of your number one player who's tossing for 350 and four touchdowns about every week for eight consecutive games. Yeah. I just, I, it's, it's funny, you know, uh, just like Allen Iverson said in his practice rant, it's funny. To, it's funny to me too. It's funny to me too. I don't understand why that was. And then like, why you would come out and then freely admit it, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you could just say, you know, Hey, tried some things. We're looking at some things. We're going to, Go back at it. You know, we got a bye week here. We're going to, you know, try to shore some things up and move forward. He could have just given the, the coach speak answer, but no, he's, yeah, I haven't really, you know, sat and spoken with Tyler. What did you say to me? What did you, what did you say to everybody in public? Like, you know, there's a microphone. You know, this is on video. You know, this is still up on the Miami Hurricanes YouTube channel. You know that, like, there's, like, you know, bloggers like myself and, you know, full-time beat writer journalists that are going to talk about the, you know, that you like, you know, that we can hear you, you know, what I mean? like, but Hey, that is Maryland's issue now, but I, <laughs> I don't even necessarily think it's going to be that much of an issue because Mike Loxley, even though he has given Josh Gaddis the opportunity to be the named offensive coordinator, trust and believe Loxley's running that offense. And he also brought in Kevin Sumlin. So he's put some minds together there. Yeah. To, yeah, to yes. supersede anything Josh Gaddis is doing. Exactly. Which, <laughs> I mean, wow. Uh, how the mighty have fallen. Josh Gaddis, like that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you certainly took off on where I was going. Coming off the question about the offense and where it was headed was Tyler Van Dyke. And of course, he is the guy. And um, so it seems like you're pretty confident that he can once again be the player of 2021 eight game stretch versus, you know, if he gets a reasonable yeah. level of support from his wide receivers in particular, you know, mm -hmm. they obviously have to help him out much to a much yeah. greater degree than they did last year. Yeah. And it might not be exactly to that level, but I mean, in that caliber of performance. Yeah. And that's the thing. We've seen him do it. So it would be one thing, you know, like I don't know that about, you know, anybody else on the roster. I don't know that about Jakari Brown, even from high school, because he was still, you know, a 55%, you know, 180 yards passing, 130 yards rushing kind of guy in high school. So it's not even like he was, you know, just dotting him up or anything. But no, like we've seen Tyler Van Dyke do this with our own eyes. We've talked about it. So it's not even like, it's not extrapolation. At all. This is not hypothetical. This is not projection of what we've seen him do. This is not like he was the backup for a couple years and now he's stepping into the starting role. And so we're not going to scale what his performance is. We've seen this guy do it. So, yeah, I believe that. I mean, I've seen him do it. I know that he can do it. Obviously, he needs support from the running game, from the wide receivers and every the wide receiver room, which is a gigantic question mark for me. Um, oh, boy. Um yeah, just because we're gonna need we're gonna need a guy, and I don't know that we have a guy, and you know, God love him and everything, and he's productive as hell, and he's feisty, and you need leadership like this. You need uh, just 
program, you need guys in your program like him. But Xavier Restrepo is a three or a four, man. You know, he and they're roommates and everything, and they have that synergy where, like, you know, it's the explosion is not what Gino and Stedman was because Gino. And again, I'm talking about this because I worked at Miramar High School and I called these games uh, for years. They literally played together their entire lives. And it really didn't matter what the play call was. Gino knew where Stedman was going to be. And it could be, you know, a three-yard stop or a 60-yard go. I'm going to find him, and it's going to happen. And Optimus level at Miramar, look, anywhere and everywhere. That's what the connection was. So now with Tyler Van Dyke and Xavier Restrepo, they have that similar thing, but Xavier Restrepo is seven, eight yards from the line of scrimmage all the time and everything, which is fine. He's not really going to outrun anybody. He's really not going to outjump people on a consistent basis and everything. He's fine. And again, you need guys like this. You need leaders like this. You need feisty players who are you know going to just have that joie de vivre and like everything. You need guys like that. But he, him being your most productive receiver leaves a lot to be desired. And hopefully there's somebody else that can step up uh, and support as well. But uh, yeah, there's a lot that, uh, that needs to happen. Um, it's not just that, but that is atop the list uh, of conversation, at least for today.